Good evening, my name is Jennifer Buckle, and I'm here to talk to you about teenage suicide, which is on the rise in the United States. It is the third leading cause of death amongst high school students. It is important for the medical staff, teachers, and parents to know how to identify signs, symptoms of depression, and how to help the child in need. Teenagers today are faced with many diff difficult factors that may cause depression. We will talk about different problems that teenagers are faced with today in today's society and learn about ways to help the troubled ones. Today, the teens are faced with the coronavirus and some of the things that they face with the coronavirus. Uh, they have fear about loved one's health, um, changing, and there may be a change in their sleep or eating patterns, difficulty sleeping or concentrating. Uh, and this can worsen their medical condition. So if they already have depression or anxiety, this can really make it um, on a rise. Uh, social isolation due to the quarantine and now the kids are forced to do homeschooling. And we're going to take a minute, we're going to talk to a couple of our local teens um, about how they're feeling through this quarantine. Make sure you introduce yourself. Can you tell me your name? Hi, I'm Brian St. John. Hi, Brian. Um, and how are you dealing with the quarantine right now? as a teenager. Can I cuss? No, you cannot cuss. Uh, subpar, to put it politely. And what kind of changes are you facing? Well, I've lost my grandmother due to this, uh, to this pandemic. And it, everything just feels kind of like, uh, like, it, it's surreal. Like, it's, it's, too bizarre to be true. Okay. Uh, it's it's definitely a uh, a weird. That's a dog. It's definitely a weird time. That's for sure. And how are you? Are you feeling? Um, how are you dealing with like depression or being sad about like the loss of your grandmother? Well, there's two ways. One is I just kind of distract myself with random around the house projects, like I've picked up hydro dipping, where you spray paint water, dip an object in it, and paint it. Or I've just been doing, or I've just been doing schoolwork online. Okay. What about, are you in any kind of therapy? Uh, yes. It's with this, it's through the school. Uh, once a week on Tuesdays at 10, 1030, uh, the, ther the therapist calls. So you're able to keep in touch with her through Zoom? Uh, well, we can do, we keep in touch through Zoom. Uh, she, she has my cell phone number. She's my, my mother's cell phone number. And then, uh, email and, uh, remind. Okay, great. Thank you for the interview. Next. Next, we're going to talk to... Local team number two. Local team number two. Can you tell me your name? Hi, my name is Garrett Ray. Hi, Garrett. And how are you dealing with the whole coronavirus? Um, good, I guess. I mean, I haven't really gone anywhere. Do you have any fears about it? I mean, more for like older family members because it affects them stronger because they have weaker immune systems and their respiratory isn't as strong as mine. Okay. Um, are you concerned about your parents and their jobs? A little bit, yeah. Do you feel like you have extra pressure with that? Uh, I wouldn't really say pressure on me, but I feel like they're they have more pressure on them because they could have the they could lose their job because of this, and what are they going to do the whole time the job's gone? Right. How are you doing with doing online schooling? Um, it's just finding the motivation to do it. Besides that, I've been doing pretty good. A lot better than I did in school. And do you do any therapy? Oh uh, yeah, actually I had therapy today. And how how are you able to 
do your therapy? Uh, through Zoom calls. That's nice. You have that support. That's great. Thank you. Some other concerns that um, other p kids have had is um, they're feeling it's not a panic because of the virus itself, but because of isolation and panic, some of the kids are trying to do suicide um, because they, they don't know how to deal with the isolation. Um, other things are the uh, economic crisis, the increase of unemployment rate, poverty, homelessness, and if their parents are essential employees, um, the fact that they the parents can get it and also bring it home. Warning signs that um, we need to look at as a nurse is definitely like if you have kids that are talking about if the parents bring the kids in to the hospital, um, we need to take it serious when they're writing songs or poems. Um, and the music that they're listening to sometimes can be a hindrance. And if they're pulling away from the family, um, if they're losing interest in things that they love, like sports and their favorite activities, um, some other things as a nurse, we have to, um, educate the, the family, help them figure out like what to look for and, um, provide them with the proper, um, places to go. Another thing that they do is, um, self-harming, um, they do cutting. Uh, these are the three, well, they do, um, guns are involved, cutting, hanging, and ingesting. Um, sometimes the teenagers get together and they do farm parties and they want to empty out um, their parents' medicine cabinets and they all just start taking pills. Well, the problem is, is they don't know what they're taking. They could be taking Valium and blood pressure pills and uh, all these dangerous pills. So parents need to know... Um, you know, if you're not, if your drug's out of date or you're no longer taking that medication, take it to the police department. They have a disposable box, you know, just put all the medications in there. Keep your medications locked up. If you have handguns, make sure they're in a safe, locked. Make sure that the ammunition is locked separate. <clears throat> Um, the other thing um, we need to do is we need to um, make sure that you know your kids' friends, um, and that's something that's really important. Um, if they start hanging out with somebody you don't know, you need to get to know them. You need to know where your kids are. You need to look at their phones every once in a while. We have to try to help parents learn the balance between um, being just a concerned parent and being overbearing. Uh, the nurse needs to take the opportunity to teach the teens about the social opportunities, um, how to say no to drugs, how to say no to sex, um, talk to them about preventing alcohol abuse. As nurses, we have to do a lot of teaching. Um, bullying. Bullying is another big thing. Um, they can do it online, they can do it face to face, um, and they can be, the kids can be bullied for many different reasons. Um, if they just don't have the right shoes or the, you know, proper brand name. Um, things to watch out for is cyberbullying. That's a big one. Um, we have to teach our kids how um, to be safe online. We have to teach them to watch what they post. Um, some of the teenagers are getting into sexting. That's where they take sexual pictures and send it. And they have to realize that um, once you put it out there, you can't get it back. 
So as nurses, we have to talk to our students and um, help the parents, again, with the trust versus um, being overbearing and just provide a lot of education and safety. Um, let them know um, different resources that they have. For treatment, they'll go to, if you have a child that could be suicidal, um, you want to take them to the emergency room. And what they do is they get, um, well, first, as a nurse, you have to know what your policies are for the hospital, um, what assessment tools and assessment questions you use at that particular facility. And... Um, Um, once the child is cleared medically, um, the child is going to be put in an examination room with nothing in it except a chair. Make sure that, you know, you don't have any O2, um, O2 tubing or cables or anything that they can use to harm themselves while they're in your care. Um, you want to make sure that they're assigned a sitter, a one-on-one -on -one person that can watch them during their time at the facility. Um, once they're cleared medically, then a counselor will come in from one of the different places. Like down here, we have Sun, which is um, a behavioral institute. You have Dover Behavioral, and then Rock Rockford, I think, is another one. Um, but you want to make sure that the, the child is safe and um, that they understand why they're there. And hopefully they'll talk to you if they have a plan. Um, you know, we have to make sure the parents understand that, that this is real. This isn't, you know, just a, a cry for help. Sometimes, sometimes they do cutting. We need to teach families about last. Last is let someone know what is troubling you. A is ask, ask for and accept support of others. S is for sharing feelings. And T is for telling an adult who can help. In conclusion, we need to um, make sure that we do not isolate the child. Um, we need to make sure they're getting professional um, help, counseling, medications. Um, we need to make sure that the parents are able to order the medications and do their follow-up appointments every three months. Uh, we need to make sure that no one is getting blamed for it. It is, um, everyone presents different with depression and it's not caused by just one person or an individual. Um, we need to encourage the child um, to set small goals, um, for her or himself that they can work on every day. Um, and that could be a craft, building Legos, whatever's gonna help them get through their, their tough times. Um, we also wanna make sure we're providing activities um, that the kids will make the kids feel good. And this is like encouraging um, ed, um, conversations with families, um, do some kind of board games or do a craft. And we need to learn that we can talk about depression. Um, it's something that everyone is facing, adults, children, and we need to make sure that they have the proper education and that they have access to the suicide hotline and to know that there's always help out there. Thank you. And here's a little clip. Um, this was my mother-in-law we just lost to um, the coronavirus and she was an OB nurse for 19 years. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye.